Welcome to the podcast, podcast number one. Yes. The Hourglass Live podcast, which all you guys have been waiting for. Yeah, it's Sean Thomas here. Sean Thomas and Steph, Steph Cuddy. Yeah, director so. ST, actually nah, Sean Thomas 91, what up? At Sean Thomas 91, yeah. yeah. All the pics, all the pics you see on my page, at Steph Cuddy, is this guy. It's pretty dope. What's up? But yeah, we're live here, Hourglass headquarters, you know? trying this shit out for the first time yeah a lot of you guys you guys been waiting on this man the podcast at the shop but you guys are wondering where this is at but this is at the shop at the at the flagship location the Uh, original location yep in niagara st catharines the one and only i know uh i know there's there's a lot to talk about there's a lot of things that it's going on in the world and basically this first episode we're just gonna keep it casual no Mm -hmm. no real topics or anything it'll just be us keeping it cool and you guys could get to know us and going forward we'll have some some topics in the next episodes but this is just kind of a trial we don't even know if we will release this yet but but we'll see we'll see my posture right yeah fuck You you guys are going to end up seeing a lot of things in the setup that we have here a lot of things will be popping up in here and it'll look a bit different going forward but so we got for now and it's it's pretty dope i like it yeah this is all sean all sean put this all together and the light came from greedy at greedy yeah. you know respect for that light the hourglass light is pretty dope mm-hmm. yeah you see that so keeping it fresh up in here yeah. this is the first setup you know we'll probably change it up through the time maybe yeah, add yeah. some shit yeah here and there you know, make it more homey as we go. Yeah, but. but this is it, man. So, I mean, this is at a barber shop. If you guys don't know, I'm a barber. I'm a barber in Niagara. I've been cutting uh, since like, what, 2008? That was high Damn. school. 11 so, years. 11 years, which is crazy. Um, I don't know, I, I started like cutting, cutting people for fun. Um, actually, I started cutting my own hair. I couldn't find a good barber in the area. Which is so, crazy. So Not a lot of people I know cut their own hair. No. So, yeah, man, I didn't notice that until I was in Toronto cutting hair, and I, I was talking to a lot of other barbers, and they didn't, they didn't cut their own hair, which is crazy. Now, did you, so, like, initially just go to Toronto, like, to actually pursue cutting hair, or what, like, why were you going um, there in the first place? So I went to Toronto... Um, so I'll backtrack a bit. So I started cutting hair. I started cutting my own hair. Started gaining clients because they saw the the fresh cuts I was giving myself. Yeah. So um, they started asking me to cut their hair, and I never really turned down the clients. I was like, you know, make a bit of extra money for the bar and stuff yeah. like that. When you're Why not? when you're a, a student, you have no money, man. And trying to work a job, a, a real job, and go yeah. to school, you you can't really. Now, did you cut hair in res too? And Raz, yeah. I cut hair, yeah, a few a few of my guys, obviously Lyrum, Lyrum, I was True. cutting your hair back shout in Raz, shout out Lyrum, I'm the Thai Cats, doing your, doing your thing, got the great cup with the Argos, and now he's doing his thing with the Thai Cats, so shout out to you, but it was back in those days, man, I was, so that was my uni years, I started in high school, just for, for fun, but um, uni years, I was doing it for a little bit of money, like five, ten bucks for a cut, yeah. I uh, got my bar money that way, so that's how I ended up going out. I, I went to Western for two years, so... True. That, w- that was an experience. Good place to get bar money. Yeah. I, I, I learned a lot about life over there and came back here, transferred to Brock, finished up at Brock. Um, but the whole time I was cutting hair while, while trying to get my degree. Mm-hmm. and um, Which was in what? Uh, econ. True. So it was, it, it was a mm-hmm. mission, but... I mean, I took an entrepreneurship class at, at Brock, and I knew after taking that class, that was, that was kind of what I wanted to get into. So entrepreneurship and what I was doing as a side hustle and barbering, it kind of went hand in hand. And I, I never saw myself as just like a barber, but a businessman as yeah. well. So it kind of it gave me an opportunity to do my thing. So, I mean, coming back home after going to Western, um, I noticed that Brock, a lot of the, the students, they were looking for a place to get a haircut around here. And as you know, we're in St. Catharines, mm-hmm. Niagara. Yeah. So what up? shout SDC. out to St. Catharines. Uh, man, even when I was living out in Toronto, I used to tell people, uh, everyone thinks I'm from Toronto, which is crazy. But um, mm-hmm. I never I never rep the six, uh, unless, unless it's the Raptors or yeah. some sports team Real or talk. something like that. But 
when I'm out and about, I, I tell people I'm from, I'm from St. Catharines, I'm from Niagara. i put it on the map a little bit because, I mean, GTA is good and everything, but, uh, like, people are starting to realize now that Niagara is the yeah. new wave, man. Like, Yeah, a lot of coming, development down here and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, they're coming down here to, to do a lot of things. But anyways, back to, back to what I was saying. Yeah. Like, I got into cutting. Um, I, I was a financial advisor actually at Scotia Bank while cutting hair on the side after university. So I got and that my, was in St. Catharines. I was in St. Catharines, Grimsby, and Hamilton. True. Um, and I would come home after work and and cut hair a little bit just just to keep my clients active and keep my my cutting fresh. So I always enjoyed it. I never turned away clients. I I always took new clients on and. Yeah started racking up some money that way so um i came to a point where the bank was kind of they're kind of bouncing me around as i said i was i was in st catherine's grimsby and hamilton and i couldn't get transferred back from hamilton to, to st catherine's yeah. so instead of making that commute i decided to come back and and actually i decided to leave the bank and fully pursue my career in barbering true which is crazy so that's and when that I, was that was when that was and that was 2016 true so three years now which is crazy and then yeah. um so yeah so from that that's when i decided to move to toronto um did a barber course out there uh the toronto fade master academy true. shout out shout out to dwight and miami phase yeah spent a bit of time there which is which is a really good experience learned a lot about the business side of things as well as cutting uh, obviously um but so I was out in Toronto learning how to cut hair, and I uh, I worked at Miami Fades for just over a year, um, in the Yorkville location, and that was that was good. When I, as I was saying earlier, when I was in Toronto, I wasn't telling anyone I was from Toronto because mm-hmm. that's where I'm from and represented Niagara the whole time. Yeah. Um, how was like the transition with like just like the lifestyle and just like how Toronto's more like fast paced and some shit's moving quick. Like, yeah, man. Toronto's how was, hella fast How was paced. the adjustment? It was, it was an adjustment, man. Um, I mean, I, I have the personality that I could kind of jump into any situation and then yeah. I, I could deal with it. But I was living actually in Etobicoke, but commuting out to Yorkville, which was actually a, a longer commute than I thought it would be. <laughs> It says like eight kilometers on Google Maps, which is like which turns into like forty five minutes to an hour. Forty five minutes in Toronto, man. It's the traffic and even TTCs. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of public transit, so I, I try to avoid that. But yeah. It it took forever to get around in Toronto, man. But everything's kind of convenient if you if you uh, if you're trying to do groceries and things like that. Everything's right there yeah. for you, but. If you have a job on one end of the city and you're living in the other end, it's kind of, it's kind of tough. You kind of mm. got to set yourself up properly for all that kind of stuff. But uh, true. But yeah. So, like, what what was like, like taking the course and going through like everything like that? Like, what did you like? I always find like when like taking courses and stuff, there's like generally like a few things like you're already trying to like hone in on because it's like you already cut yeah. prior to actually like taking an official course i guess you yeah, would yeah. say so it's like you know so, like, like what i focused on really was like i always knew how to fade hair and line it up and yeah. do all that kind of stuff but i was focusing on the sheer work and the straight blade learning how to use the straight blade and doing shaves and beards um i'm just seeing the services that they had so it was like the hot towel shaves and things that i never yeah. really did before right so i was doing a lot of the basement cuts like out of my parents basement and out of my res and all that kind of stuff but actually being in a location with a real barber chair and mm-hmm. a real counter to put your tools out on yeah it feels actually, like official yeah man like actually before i started at miami phase the tools i was using were like little walmart tools <laughs> i didn't know what proper tools to use yeah. so the guys over at miami phase dwight and everything they got me a proper kit to to cut hair so they got me all the tools the the fast feed um oster fast feed and the and his t-liner and yeah a bunch of stuff that you start learning as a barber as you start progressing the, yeah, the like proper the, tools the, the official tools yeah. the legitimizers yeah. yeah so i got my real toolkit started cutting hair and i mean with the whole move to toronto i always i always had the goal to open my own shop yeah in st Catharines because i knew that there was a need to to have a shop here Excuse um me. yeah uh 
like as I said, the students at Brock they're all looking for haircuts and me coming home here, opening up a shop. It's not only the Brock students, but just the region in general is developing a lot, a lot yeah. of a lot of new workers in town and a lot of new faces in town that are moving from Toronto yeah. down to St. Catharines. I see the housing market's crazy because they're all... Yeah, and the crazy development, which is downtown in general. Yeah, right and now. downtown. I mean, it was a perfect opportunity for me to jump into downtown St. Catharines, invest in the city a little bit. Um, as I grow my business, um, the city's growing as well. So it's yeah. perfect time to grow as, as a city and a business. Um, so my business now is Hourglass Barbershop, which is downtown St. Catharines yeah. on James Legit. Street. Five James. Mm -hmm. So pop by yeah. whenever whenever you want to cut. I yeah. mean, pop by or check out the online bookings. Actually, and definitely check out the online booking. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you pop by, we'll try to get you in. But I mean, a lot you of times we have guarantee. a yeah we have appointments <laughs> slotted up, so it's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, man. So it's been a journey, mm -hmm. and I mean, it's, it's now I'm getting onto the side where it's not just cutting hair, but I'm I'm getting mm -hmm. out there a little bit. You know, I, I went to BarberCon in in LA. A few months yeah. ago yeah. so that was pretty crazy um learned a lot of stuff out there a lot of things we we're talking about was hair enhancements now yeah so you, barbers True. don't just take hair off Specs. they also Need that yeah <laughs> that's why you're rocking the hourglass you know? hat you know? you know so but yeah you don't just take hair down now it's like you're enhancing the hair making sure their little ball patches are taken care of and stuff so yep. making people feel confident yeah so it's i mean it's 2019 the whole industry is evolving and yeah. it's, it's come back to the scene because of Instagram and all that kind of stuff. You come across a bunch of barber videos on Instagram. And um, actually, that's another way I learned is through YouTube mm -hmm. and learning, going through tutorials on YouTube and just uh, having some buddies let me test some stuff out on them. But, right. Um, but yeah, man. So it's crazy. It's crazy the, the amount of things we're doing right now with just the shop in general and how far we've come from mm. how far I've come from just cutting hair in the basement yeah, yeah, and, get in the basement. Yeah, and now got a location downtown. So, so I'll, like, well, so for the record, so the shop opened in 2007, 2018, 18, February. So February. So, so yeah, like February, 2018, we've had the one year, had a one year. It's almost it's one and a half now, pretty much, man. Mm. Like, Time's flying, which mm -hmm. is crazy. So from the start, it was just you, just the only barber. At the start, it was just me, man. How did that feel, just like kind of being in the shop with that, like just like you know the, all the stations and just like you know you're just starting out, but it's like you know yeah. you have the stations just put up there anyways, like yeah. So you know? yeah, I set up three stations with just me uh, starting up, which was I don't know, it was good. I mean, but for the experience of clients coming in and just seeing one barber and mm -hmm. me. I mean, my schedule will pick up really quick. So trying to get people in with just one guy in here, um, all the small talk I have to do mm -hmm. with just one barber in here, it's kind of quiet if all I'm not small time, talking. Yeah. And the small talk's one thing, man. Like I end up talking about the same thing over and over to the same clients, you know, yeah. like when I go away on a vacation or something, all of them are asking about how that vacation was. Yeah. If, uh, if the Raptors are doing well, if, you know, mm -hmm. the playoffs just happen. Oh, so what do you think of the Raptors? What do you think Kawhi is going to do? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, Kawhi left. Like, what do you think of that? I've had that conversation with so many yeah, people. Yeah, I could only imagine since, the, since, so, the, since he left. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's another reason why we're doing this podcast, because here's an outlet where I could just speak my mind, let you guys know what's going on, and I don't have to answer <laughs> to you guys <laughs> separately every day, consistently. Yeah, I guess you could say Cut that. after cut. Yeah. So you guys could just check out the podcast, see what I got to say, yeah. and then we could talk about it. Yeah, that, we can know? talk about more, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it just so, leads to better conversation. Yeah, yeah. You know? instead of... I mean, now that I have two other barbers, Colmar and Chris... Yeah, and shout out to Chris. Chris, this weekend. Chris B. Cuts. Um, he was at a barber com competition this weekend in Ottawa, and good luck to you. I, I know you killed it, so yeah. I'll, I'll talk to you when you're back in the shop on Tuesday. Let's I think Coco it. Cuts, you've been here since like last October. So shout out to you too. Um, you're coming up on a year, so you keep doing your thing. Mm. But now with them two beside me cutting hair and they're hearing all the small talk, even me here and their small talk, like they're, we're hearing each other repeat ourselves on a daily yeah, basis. Yeah. 
like Comer will be like, he'll look at me and be like, man, like you just told the story like three times. It was like, man, <laughs> like these clients are asking. So, hey man, so what now, you, want? you know, what do you want? And you, know? you guys will get to meet these guys. Maybe I'll have yeah. them on the podcast and shit. And, and they yeah, could, true. We'll bring them in. Yeah. They could. Mm-hmm. I know Chris, Chris will love to be on this podcast. Yeah, he, so. he has a lot to say. We'll so. bring them in and let them talk about the, uh, the experience yeah. of the tournament. Exactly. So Let's see what's up. He's, he's a very competitive kid and, and mm-hmm. very confident. So yeah. it's pretty dope that he's doing those competitions. Barber competition is going to bring some trophies back to us, Most hopefully. And yeah. I mean, if it doesn't work out this time, next time it, it, it will. So, oh. But yeah, man. So now that we have the shop up and running and we're cutting hair and stuff, now we're branching off and doing other things doing the media side of things which is hourglass live yeah HGL. Um, hdl shout out shout out yeah. to to truly ours mm-hmm. millie millie bucks and Our boy uh, greedy and greedy you know jeff jeff yeah hefe hefe so shout out to you guys man so we're doing our thing with this man so we started off we we partnered with the river lines we're a sponsorship for them yeah which has, been sick. which has been pretty dope man we've met a lot of good guys a lot of good players a lot of good people yeah, working for, for the uh, team um, been to pretty much every game. Yeah. I missed one for a wedding, but I've I've been the super fan of those yeah. games. <laughs> for real. Same with you, and you're taking yeah, a lot of man. good shots of these guys. Yeah, so. it's been so sick. Yeah, these guys are super dope. Yeah. If you guys haven't seen a Riverlands game, go. Yeah, because these guys are actually for real. Yeah, if yeah, these guys, they're previous D1 players, or they they all played in very mm-hmm. high levels, G League. Um, yeah. It's Canadian Basketball League, man. CEBL, look it up. Um, at CEBL League on Instagram, mm. and it's pretty crazy. Like, they're really doing something for for basketball in Canada, and mm-hmm. just with the whole Raptors winning the championship and with with this it league coming up in the same more. year, it's like it's like all these kids that are bringing yeah. basketball into their lives now. It builds, it you know, up. it's building it's up that that Carter effect that happened in two thousand four yeah. or whatever, two thousand three. That's just. Uh, we'll see the effect this all this has ten years from now when all these kids grow up. Because it'll be interesting to see what, like how the fans are at the start of this season. I would think because I feel like the Raptors have gained like yeah a shit ton yeah. of new fans already. Yeah. So which hopefully you know I, I mean I, I hope ticket prices kind of went down after. Yeah, uh, I would think so. I don't know how happened. all the uh, the fans are taking it with yeah. the uh, Kawhi. I know people are respecting like you know I was I was cool with it. Like I figured like. That's what it was. He wasn't I mean, holding out that long for he took whatever. That, like he he took his chip and dipped. That's I'm, what he did. I'm cool with that. He, like yeah, like you know he, what I mean. So nothing wrong with wanting to go home. Yeah, he since San Antonio days he wanted to go back home. So yeah. we kind of knew, but we had that hope. You know, we always try to run it back to back. Shout out to Drizzy. Yeah, Drizzy you know, the back to back. We we're looking for another track like that. Mm-hmm. But I mean, Kawhi is gone, so we could still run it back to back, but it's going to be a lot harder. Hopefully Siakam could yeah. step it up and Larry is doing his thing. So. And OG, so. OG will be coming out strong this year. So and Chris Mas- Boucher. And Masai, and Masai we trust. And Masai yeah. we trust. I, I know he's doing his thing. So, mm. But yeah, so back to what we were talking about earlier. We started off with the River Lions shop talk. Yeah. Um, River Lions, if you don't know, they're a basketball league, professional basketball team um based out of niagara st yeah. Catharines. there's there was, what six teams in the league right now there's six teams across canada uh, it's the coast inaugural coast, season almost. so yeah across yeah. canada it's um fraser valley is the furthest team from here Train. which is in bc edmonton saskatchewan uh guelph hamilton and niagara and then i know they're going to expand yeah there's teams out in quebec i'm sure that are looking to get into the league i'm sure teams out east are looking to get in mm-hmm. um so We'll see how much this this grows, but with the base that they have right now, it's is looking pretty good, especially yeah. compared to the past, the and the NBL I saw them playing in, that which was a different league. It wasn't the C E B L. Um this this looks like a step forward mm-hmm. for the better. So So we've been doing a shop talk with the Riverlines players and they're coming from all over. They're coming from the States, Toronto, Montreal, um, and they're all professionally professional play basketball players there's a lot of fruit flies up in here so if you see us swatting <laughs> yeah don't worry we're, we're about trying that. to trying to get rid of these clean flies. house you know um but yeah man it was good to it's good to get to know these guys if you want to check out the shop talks with uh the river lines players check it out on youtube yeah. um it's on the river lines youtube channel um we'll also 
possibly post yeah. it on our channel. It's yeah. going to be an hourglass if live. If this gets posted, there'll be a link in the yeah. description. Yeah. Yeah, we'll post that up. For real. We're, we're learning all the new tricks. <laughs> right? Killed that so, one. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, man. So we did some shop talks with them. Got to know all these guys and they really enjoy it. Yeah. Um, Looking forward to doing a couple more. Yeah. And the season's uh, coming to a close yeah, quickly. Yeah, man. It's a four month season, May to August. So, yeah. Man, it's already mid July, as I said, and it's crazy how quick time flies. It's coming to a close. Yeah. Championship weekend is in Saskatchewan. I believe, what, the, the weekend of like the 22nd or like yeah. whatever weekend falls around Almost that end time. Of August. Almost end of August. So we only have a few more home games we got to check out, and, yeah. and then, then the season's done. First yeah, season's hopefully, over. Hopefully, Hope. hoist the trophy. Yeah, hopefully, we get the ship. Yeah, and, bring it back uh, to the shop. Yeah. You know, bring it right yeah. here. Yeah. You bring know. that bring that trophy back to shop. True. So so far we had right here. we had one trophy in the shop so far. Yeah. Other than the trophy that we won as a, true as the as the, the shop a, yeah. as a shop. So so let me so we had the great cup the great cup great cup a grand opening at the grand opening. Shout out to Liam again. Yeah. He br- pulled up and brought it through. You know, game winning field goal kick. G- game winning field goal kick. What you know about cup, that? Which is crazy. Mm-hmm. And actually, when I was living in Toronto, he was living with me out in Toronto. So, and then when I was in Western, we were roommates in Western. Yeah. And we, that's grew, crazy. we grew up playing soccer together and everything. So that's how I know him. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people ask how I know Liram and stuff. But so, and then he pulled up he, to the grand opening of the barbershop, brought the great cup. Yeah. And that was pretty dope. And then yeah, sick. we have another trophy that we won last year in uh, December, which was the Niagara Social's yeah. um, Excellence in Hair and Beautification, which, is, talk. which is pretty crazy. Yeah. The only barbershop yeah. nominated. Yeah, and within competing the competing fir- against salons and everyone. Yeah, salons, yeah. Um, nail nail places. Oh, that's true. Yeah, a bunch of a bunch of different aesthetics were nominated. Yeah. So and respects to everyone who voted. Yeah, Hourglass. Everyone that's that voted dope. Hourglass, respect. That's pretty respect dope to you guys, and I appreciate that a lot. Within the first year of business, I mean, yeah. winning that trophy. It was crazy. It was crazy. Was like word. Like I pulled up to that event, not really expecting. I mean, I yeah. mean, I know that we were doing our thing, but. I wasn't expecting us to yeah, be some of those. Uh, at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. It was some sick. of those um, no- nominees were yeah, have been doing, doing their thing, you know? yeah, so, for time. So it just shows, I mean, the level that we're at now. So mm-hmm. it's crazy. Progress, you know. Yeah. Steady, steady driving. Yeah. So it's only going forward from here. We'll, we'll keep doing these podcasts and let you guys know what's, what's going good going forward. So. I don't even know. Yeah. Um. And then, and then let's talk about a little bit about you. Yeah, so true. Yeah, I'll give, I'll give a, a little. Yeah, a little, give a give a little bit because, a little. because a lot of people that come into the shop they see you. Um, kind of yeah. They, they, and, I mean, uh, I try to avoid you, eye contact. Yeah, Sean, <laughs> Sean kind of hides in the back and does his thing. This is Sean, you know? by the way, at Sean Thomas. Yeah, Sean uh, Thomas ninety one. What up? Yeah. Um. So he does a lot of the social media for the the uh, Hourglass Barbershop and Hourglass Live. As Hourglass Live is collectively four of us. Yeah. Barbershop, Hourglass Barbershop, we work on it a lot together uh, in terms of like marketing and stuff. Um, all the pictures, um, videos that you see what on you're the seeing page, right now. all this stuff. Yeah, what you're seeing what right now, this whole that. setup is, is this guy right here. So um, a lot of people see you popping in the shop and walk into the back into your office and stuff, into the studio. Yeah. And um, no one knows that there's a studio in the back. No. I guess. So I guess now you guys no, know if yeah, you guys they are, might know. But um, low, Inv- low invite yeah. only. It, yeah, it's you a pri- it's a private thing. You, um, you gotta find my people yeah. to get in there. So know. if you're one, yeah, if you're wondering why this guy is walking in out of the shop and walking straight to the back, that's what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And uh, does a lot of edits, video edits. Spend uh, hours on the computer. Yeah, that's it. Just had to Just get a new Mac. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, moving moving quick right now. Yeah, shooting a lot, yeah. gearing up. Gearing up for so, some cool stuff. I don't want to say it because I, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like if I put it out there, it might not happen. So yeah. we'll just, we'll wait. But let's but, talk about the past stuff that you did then. So you, you, you've you done, well, obviously you've done a lot of work within the shop. Like all the, yeah. the haircuts that you see on the Hourglass client, Barbers. Client shop. Or all like, the client yeah. shop. Everything that you see on the Hourglass Barbers page and my personal page pretty much is, is you. Is you took all those shots. Um, but um, other than that, other than what you're doing in the shop, you have business outside of the shop as well, mm-hmm. um, which is 
a lot of you go on a lot of tours a lot of concerts a lot of concerts you yeah. do videography for a lot of the, the artists yeah. coming through yeah which is pretty dope i mean i pulled up to a couple concerts with you which, which is sick which is yeah. sick i saw wu-tang you know went backstage and met up met, dapped up all the wu-tang yeah. members and stuff shout out my guy. boy peter jackson shout out to peter you know, jackson who's, who's he hooking it up it's good yeah yeah so mm-hmm. Peter Jackson, yeah, he's he's hooking it up for sure. Yeah, he's um, the man. You guys got a good thing going. And then uh and then Snoop. Snoop was yeah, just in the town. Snoop tour was sick. You did Snoop's I think tour? We did like four or five shows. Yeah. Within Ontario. Yeah. And it was just sick. Yeah. Sick. Like I grew up listening to a lot of Snoop and West Coast music. So yeah. just like being able to stand there kind of like and just openly be able to film and just kinda of watch and yeah. like front row and just kind of like yeah. Word. Then I got to see it like night in and night out, and yeah. it's just like it doesn't really get boring because you're just like, man, this guy's got bangers, and for it's sure just, you can just drop anything, and it's like his set was so like well curated and yeah. stuff. So it's like this guy knows what he's doing, and he doesn't take lines off. So yeah. it's like, like to all the rappers out there who want to perform, like know your shit, like you know, don't take lines off because it's yeah. like ain't nobody want to hear your song playing in the background. We can go to the club for that. Yeah, real talk, but. I don't know. No, Snoop was definitely dope. That was a sick, t- uh, sick, sick time and stuff. You know, shot a lot of stuff. I shoot like night by night, basically like go to the show, film, depending on what time. This was like a bigger like tour, so like we were in like arena venues yeah. or so, like between like five to like seven thousand whatever yeah, that's and crazy. stuff. So like the venues were sick. So it was a different like experience because I had been on other tours with like some major artists, but like mostly like bigger larger club venues between like whatever like 800 1500 i don't know max capacities but you know with like uh fetty and like sean kingston but snoop was sick yeah because it's like just huge venues seeing like people like fill up an arena He's an OG, and just, like, man. like like and when just i went to snoop, to a guy. snoop and um and wu-tang like the crowd it was such a mixed crowd because you yeah have the older generation with the younger generation that are all yeah. pulling up to this concert and it fills up the, the spot man like mm. with fetty wap when you did fetty wap i'm sure it's a bunch of younger a lot of, a lot of younger kids yeah so. like none of the none of the ogs no. really know or not ogs but the yeah. older heads they don't really they wouldn't really yeah. go check out they fetty know wap like, like a that, one two you know? but yeah they probably yeah. wouldn't like they're yeah. not gonna yeah that, who knows uh, they might but it's not like it, going it to see was, snoop was, and yeah. wu-tang you know yeah, exactly it's just snoop, a different, snoop brought it out everybody yeah, yeah. You know, young and old, so, didn't matter. But yeah, man, Excuse so me. that's crazy. So that's a little bit about, like, what you've been doing. Yeah. Because a lot of people have been asking what, you, what you're up to and what you've been saying. And for me to tell everyone what you've been up to is, like, yeah, let's just hear from you. There's a lot. You know? You know? So. Basically, just film. Yeah. Then chop it up quick. Yeah. And the fast, basically, the way I see it on tour, the faster I can get the video, like, done like the more i just get to just like experience tour and just yeah. like not have to worry about like deadlines for like videos getting out so it's like yeah, yeah. you know just like being able to get stuff done like really quick then yeah. it's like i can just enjoy my time with yeah. like all the people that i'm there with and yeah. stuff and like enjoy the cities at least you know because sometimes we're just there quick and we're not really in the town then we're just kind of in and out yeah but you know this tour we got to like experience some towns like huntsville and stuff nice shout out to huntsville Huntsville's they got dope, a nice man. little town there yeah. you know some nice lakes and stuff nice i'm I sure could, i could go back there a lot of people are probably heading up there right now with, i know with summer and everything cottage country and stuff mm-hmm. so so yeah man like and the, if we drop this and anyone sees it from like that tour that i was at the bar at and shit just comment and maybe we'll link up i don't know because yeah. that'd be sick that'd be dope yeah because we partied there pretty hard yeah, I seen I seen those on uh, on the story, man. All true. the shots lined up and stuff. And it's true, he was. You guys had that. a time. Yeah, that PJ was a, that was a real good time. Up. Yeah, yeah. So, that's good, man. Mm. Um, doing yeah, doing all that kind of stuff is is crazy. Um, yeah, it's been a ride so far. Yeah, it's not over. I still don't feel like I've made my best video. Like I feel like I'm far from it. Well, not yeah. to say that the stuff I haven't done is like I don't know, not good, but like yeah. you know what I mean. Well, it's uh, that it's that thing where like you're never satisfied, man. No. It's like people with me and and the shop, they're like, okay, so so the what's shop, ne- what's yeah, next? what's next? You know, yeah. the shop looks good. I mean, I could I could keep it as is and just keep building from yeah. what it is right now. But I mean, I'm always looking to improve it. I'm never stagnant with what I'm doing, yeah. which is 
which is crazy. It's like, I'm never satisfied with how the shop is looking or, or like what's going on in the shop. Nice catch. You got him? I don't know. Uh, he's, one he's, flying, you, he's flying around still. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's crazy. So yeah. For real. Showed out, you know, got this on tour, you know, yeah. nice little toy. Yeah, I got that at the, what was it, the Cannabis Cup? Yeah, Cannabis second Cup. annual Indigenous Se- Cannabis Cup. And Naughty by Nature performed yeah. there, which is crazy. So that's... Yeah, they actually gave me this. This is, yeah. this is, yeah, I got that from them. So you got a whole I got a shit trove. ton of stuff, man. I got a treasure trove. Yeah, you got a... Uh, yeah, like you got, uh, it's, yeah. Everything. Like yeah. Budge and like pre-rolls <laughs> and everything. But anyway, shout out to them for hooking mm-hmm. you up, I guess. So I right know. So, you know, when you got to go back to the States, you know, yeah, depending on where you're going, can't always bring it. So, so they guess left, we lucked out. Yeah. Naughty by nature. They literally us. left you guys. They blessed us. All the shit that they had from, from that show. I know. Uh, which is crazy. Bless so. those guys. You so, know, yeah. they showed mad love. Yeah. That's dope. You know, so that's real dope. OGs. Yeah. Real OGs. Yeah. But dope. They're touring with new kids on the block. <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> Killing that's, arenas. That's some OG stuff. Killing, like, arenas. Like, that's crazy, because, like... Insane. I was at... What was that? I was at a TFC game, like, last summer. Or two summers ago or something. And the Molson Amphitheater, the Budweiser stage, is right across from yeah. the field. And I heard Backstreet Boys going on. Come on. So Backstreet Boys is doing a concert over there. And it's <laughs> like, man, like, all these OG artists, all these... All these, are, like, I'm sure Spice Girls are doing their thing too right now. Like, probably, not yeah. right now, but like, yeah, they probably. Out. So it's crazy seeing like new kids on the block, Backstreet Boys, and all all of them still yeah. going out on tour and selling out shows, man. Like, people want to see it. People want to see it. Man. Yeah, it's crazy. You know. So all that's the, the thing about music, man. It's timeless. Yeah. You when you make music, good records. Yeah. Yeah. All you Real. artists, I know, we know for a fact, Niagara, a lot of kids, a lot of you guys are trying to be artists, which is dope. We yeah. support it. It's a boiling pot right now. You know, yeah. people are doing their thing. We're supporting it. Hella supporting it. But um, I don't know. Like, you know how how it is. Like, Toronto's doing their thing with Drake and The Weeknd. And yeah, a lot obviously, of they're they're eight. Like, they're yeah up there. They're you know, there's there. a there's a ton of other Toronto artists that are. A lot of people still haven't re- really heard much about, but they're still really doing their thing. And they're, go- <laughs> they're going to pop off. I'm sure. Yeah, like a lot of people right now. But now people don't know, but there's a lot of shit happening in Niagara in terms of the music scene and uh, all you young guys out there and Shout girls. I guys. heard a few girls too. Yeah. All you guys just do your thing, man. And a lot of it is, is branding. Yeah. Just brand yourself properly. Come I'm out with some good content. In, putting in like real work too. Like put in the real work. Don't be lazy about it. Yeah. There's no shortcuts. All right? like, so. Ultimately it's like you want to do like shows, not just like post music on Instagram and just like, yeah. you know, yeah it's like that should be the end goal all the and time and like work towards that performing the music right yeah and like obviously writing good music but yeah you know and, and sit on things like yeah. don't don't record something and show all your best friends right away and you know yeah. sit on some things make them wait let it marinate make them crave it let them wait you know give them a little preview maybe but don't i see yeah don't send them all the tracks like yeah just let it happen it's gonna happen so just keep doing your thing i know you guys have been connecting with a lot of other people from other cities and stuff so Mm. it's good it's good it's good for the culture and we're all part of the same culture the the barber scene videography photography Mm, scene the the hip-hop culture the r&b culture the rap culture whatever it's all under one umbrella basketball yeah sports you know everything everything's under one umbrella so so we're doing it for the culture right so it's the culture all right we gotta get some fruit fried traps next time it's going in the garbage it's it's that season though it's fucking it's no it's midsummer where's the fruit at though i think um i don't know where's the fruit at i have a few small batch (laughs) um i think it's a small batch containers i have over put those outside i gotta return those and get Mm -hmm. another uh Get a free. Ten. That's exactly what it is. Now it's a, <laughs> That's it's crazy. a small batch of drinks that I have. Yeah, for real. What is it? And I have some containers up in the shop, which I got to return back. And shout if you guys don't know, yeah, man. shout out small batch, man. They're they're a real good, freshly squeezed juice um, yeah. business right downtown St. Catharines. They're our neighbor, so yeah. I was pop in and 
shoot the shit and grab a juice and you know try to stay healthy with it so it's all those containers which are bringing fruit flies up in here and i gotta get rid of yeah. those so next podcast we don't have that issue yeah but um swipe around you return 10 of those and you get a free drink so just so you know don't sure. don't toss those um Save glass bottles. jars out when you go to get a small batch drink go get 10 of them and then you'll get a free drink mm -hmm. and it's good it's real good yeah you start feeling sick you have a flu shot you're good yeah they got a drink so, for everything yeah literally everything everything it's, it's kind of it's, like yeah it says it right on like you know heart healthy and like metabolism boosting yeah it has a lot of good good stuff for you so you go there a lot do you have like one in particular that stands out that you uh, go to almost and I like, like what is it? What's it for? I don't have a standout one, but Electric Avenue is pretty good, and that. Pff, What's that? Man, uh, I couldn't <laughs> even high I, energy. I couldn't even tell All you. All natural sugar, one hundred. Yeah, it's something. Uh, it's it's good for you. I, I couldn't even tell you the exact. Yeah. The, what it's exactly for, but I like the taste of it, and it's really good. But, um, check it out though. Check it out on their yeah. Instagram page at Small Batch Juice. I, I think. Yeah. But that's small batch. You'll find it. But you'll find small it. Small batch. And you could you could see what all the drinks have in them, but they're they're real good. Um, and yeah, that's another business that's been around here for a few years now. Yeah. Like I think like, I think three years in that location or something like that. Doing so well. They're doing well. So that's they're part of the growth of St. Catharines yeah. as well. Um, a lot of new restaurants popping up here. Shout out to the guys at Bella Noelle's. Yeah. Those are my guys. Yeah. That's um, good. They come in for cuts a lot. They got the best pepperoni in town pepperoni pizza for real actually their pepperoni pizza is dope and i can't leave out pete ruddy pete yeah, ruddy's pete got ruddy, yeah dope pizza too at pete's pizza yeah can't complain he, so ever. he's got he's got a real good pizza if you're in the north end st Catharines, go check that out for real um but bell noel's man keeping it with the downtown community they're dope yeah. too they got some arcades up in their shop they got some real good pizza yeah um they're open late now stuff. um yeah, on they weekends open on different days that yeah, yeah they switch up their hours so they're open late to take care of all you all you drunk people that are <laughs> after the bar Fuel see they're, they're they're doing a good thing for you guys you know mm. like they're sobering you guys up before you guys yeah. get back home they're giving you some nice pizza to, to eat shout out mike and matt shout out mike and matt man so, yeah so let's get it let's get it i kind of want get pizza it. right now yeah it's too bad you guys aren't open what time right is it now, right now i don't know Right now it's two seventeen in the morning uh, on yeah. Monday, it's July fifteenth. <laughs> it's a that's a stretch. So, I don't think anything's open except for McDonald's and maybe A and W. Yeah. That's yeah. a that's a problem with St. Kitts and. Yeah. You know you know it's open twenty four hours though. It's not too far. Oh, from Oh, I know. The donuts. Country, country fresh. fresh. Shout out. Shout, shout out, out country, country fresh. fresh. Yeah. So if you know if you know you know. Yeah. That's if you it. if you're from if Niagara, you know, like anywhere in the Niagara region. Just you guys con know just country fresh donuts that's country all. fresh donuts just go there if you guys are hungry at like four in the morning three in the morning yeah if you guys are hungry any hour don't of the even day tell them what to order there if for people who don't actually know yeah just, just go country just go fresh to, donuts on victoria i think in the yeah. falls and you'll never you'll never guess what yeah. they have there country and fresh donuts the most bomb thing that they have there yeah you'll never expect just it. go get it just go get it <laughs> just go get it right. just go check it out everyone everyone will tell you what it is mm -hmm. um but shout out to them, man. They've been holding it down. They've been around for a minute. After Chino runs and stuff, you know? Hit up the Chino. As well. If you're in that end, in Niagara Falls, shout out to Niagara Falls. Yeah. If you're over there, go check out Country Fresh. They got some fresh donuts. Yeah, and they're 24 hours. If you they're, don't want that, like, Mickey D's yeah. burger fix, it's like, yeah. go there. They got, okay, I'll, I'll tell them what it is. They got True. that wonton soup, which yeah. is fire, fire. <laughs> it's the, it's world famous. The wonton soup with the sriracha sauce and those like little hard noodles. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Fire. That's some good stuff. Fire. Thinking so, about it right now. Yeah. So that might be something we have to pull up later, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, there's not many things open late out here. A few convenience stores. Especially downtown. Downtown. There's nothing downtown. Hella dead at night, man. There's nothing. We need a 24 hours downtown. Need a 24 hour convenience or something. But I don't know. Like, it'll it'll happen. I mean, it's so gotta. Like, I know with the downtown growing and you know, the, the city growing, down here. They're, they're, they're going to end up opening some yeah. things pretty late and there's going to be more residences here and stuff like that. So you have that's to give good. them something. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Niagara in general, like, it's crazy the growth that's been happening and actually when i was living in toronto 
I started noticing that whenever I came home to visit my parents, um, that St. Catharines was just developing so much. Yeah. And not only St. Catharines, like Welland. Like the whole I, Niagara region. Yeah. When I go out to, to Welland to play soccer, out there is developing a lot. Niagara Falls, mm -hmm. developing a ton. There's a, a lot of development. So, And what's happening now is all the Toronto people are noticing. Selling their homes. They're noticing what's Getting good over here. Yeah. So they're selling their their homes for like a million dollars mm -hmm. taking like three quarters of that and purchasing homes down here and it's not <laughs> making it affordable for us who grew up here yeah so now we're getting pushed out to like you know welland developing, niagara falls developing developing you know? cities um yeah, paving the Port way colburn and you know like places like that but yeah i mean we'll still we'll keep grinding away so we could afford a place here but man like it's crazy the market out here is getting crazy yeah um yeah i'm not yeah yeah you know, like the go's coming down here, the go train. Yeah, it's a benefit for so, sure. Just got to open their hours more. Yeah. So it's starting to come down. And then like, I read an article the other day. It was like, by, what was it? 10 years from now. So 10 years from now, 2029, 20, 2030. We're supposed to like double in population. In um, Canada? And no, in the region. Oh, okay. So, Sorry. yeah. Yeah. So... <laughs> It's supposed to be like right now we're at half a mil in the region, okay. it, including like so St. Catharines. A mil would be nice. A mil within It'd the region. It'd be well spaced. Which would be, be yeah. spread out and well. Like it wouldn't be just all. No, we got a lot of land. Cram on top. Yeah. We got a lot of land. We were just at the driving range today. We've seen a lot of land out in Niagara. Yeah. Niagara on the Lake. I can hit the driving range. I know? fuck with Niagara on the Lake a lot. I, I love it out there. Um, a lot of wineries, breweries. Yep. Um, Old Town Noddle is pretty dope. Um, yeah, Avondale Dairy Bar. Avondale Dairy Tomorrow Bar. Ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, the driving range. It was a nice day today. Driving range, batting cages out there. Yeah. Just, it was nice. It was pretty busy. People were yeah spending time People outside. were striking out. People were striking <laughs> out, you bad. know. And we wanted to be the umpires for them, but we said maybe some other time. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, it yeah, was, we actually got to do that. Yeah, yeah. Nelk Boys, you guys should do that. You yeah. guys should go to a batting cage. For real. Go to a batting cage and whoever's striking out. Yeah, get on all the gear. Just get on and Just yeah, yeah. Just be that. Start making those heavy calls. That would be yeah. a good episode for you guys. Yeah, do the chainsaw. You guys, yeah, do the you yeah. Know? Exactly. Rip it up. Yeah. Let them know. Yeah. So yeah, man. These flies. But yeah, a lot of things happening. Mhm. Mm What's next? What's next happening? I don't know. I just wish there was basketball going on well i guess we still have the river lions but yeah i'm still waiting for them because was, was, i thought the last game was a home game but right now it like, wasn't but like, this time of year is like you know people are just chilling going out to cottages yeah doing their thing but come come september october once cool weather starts coming back around and there's nfl there's nba there's mm -hmm. nhl a bunch of sports for us you know that's when things will get spicy yeah <laughs> No pun intended with spicy when, peas. When's the NFL start? NFL is, what is that, September? Yeah. They're, Damn. So they have preseason yeah, coming up they, next month. Super Bowl's in what, February? Yeah. Their season's short, but True. but it's active. Yeah. Um, so that's coming up quick. Fantasy football coming up. True. Which is crazy. Yeah, I don't really play fantasy football, but I've been told I should. Yeah, you play fantasy basketball, but not football. Yeah. Football is is the way to go, man. Basketball, I, I love basketball more as a sport. Yeah. I'm a big basketball fan, but football fantasy is just crazy. Yeah, I'm still trying to get With my the, first ring in yeah. uh, basketball fantasy, so, like, I don't know about jumping. I got my first yeah. ring in hockey fantasy in my first inaugural season with my squad. Auto draft pick. That might happen we at, with we NFL. Were at, we were at Wu-Tang, and that yeah, team yeah. that auto-drafted won the ship yeah, so that's crazy you know i remember you saying one and, one you're like yo now. like my draft's happening right now but i gotta shoot yeah i didn't even it's know like, to pick right. anyways yeah yeah other than my boy. that's crazy though see see how it is though like you might you don't even have to know who you're drafting no. and you can still win it yeah so all you fantasy jocks out there that think that <laughs> you guys know was really good yeah it is partly luck too yeah, like i mean real. i've won like i've won fantasy football uh it was the second year that we had our season and I won but you won fantasy ball fantasy ball I don't think I've won man I, I feel I might have like way back like in high school like late high school True. but recently nah fantasy ball is tough man 
I've won like a, a lot bunch of injuries, of seasons, but I've never won. Yeah. I've been to the finals maybe once, yeah. twice. I don't know. Yeah, it's I've tough. won money, but it's fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's tough, man. Yeah, I can't wait. But no, yeah, we you know, we've been in like awesome. a what seven year keeper or well the keeper year league's been like three maybe yeah but like we've seven shuffled year it up a little pool. bit but it's like it's been a core group of people for some seven, time eight now. years yeah some time we're going on time we're gonna need a trophy so, yeah for this yeah yeah flip that you know hourglass yeah I look forward to fantasy basketball every year yeah feels like you're in the mix even if you can't watch the games for sure and I mean like. We have a lot of knowledge about sports and things like that, so mm. might as well try to make a little bit of money off of it. So I know I'm always down for <laughs> you know that. What I'm saying like you're watching the game anyways. I'm always down. We've, we're knowledgeable about it. It's not like you're just spending money on a lotto ticket. No, I it's agree. like you have some sort of saying what's going yeah, on. So exactly. So all you people that bug us about betting on sports and <laughs> and fantasy and stuff, it's like you guys are the same people get that your, are get buying. Your bets their, right. Yeah, you guys are buying lotto tickets once a week or once a day, yeah. whatever it is. Spend that money and educate yeah. yourself on some sports and make a little bit more money. So you might as well. Shout out John Jones. Shout out John Jones, which that was a crazy fight. Twenty five minutes. It kind of wasn't, but like it, he might have. I thought he was gonna lose. When it, like when it went to decision, I was like, holy, it's yeah. probably go either way. And I feel like one of the judges gave it to the other guy, and he had no knees. Right. But I feel like John Jones' leg was like done. He was reigning, right? Reigning champ, John yeah. Jones. So that's probably why. Yeah. Usually the reigning champ, they get benefit of the doubt. Yeah. They, they like don't really overturn win, the... But like, I feel like to get the title, you have to beat the champ. Yeah, you can't yeah. just like yeah. walk in there and like yeah, yeah. get it, it by can't the scorecard. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, like, that's exactly it. Like, obviously, like, yeah. you know. Yeah, I missed that fight, but I heard a lot about it. Yeah, it was a crazy one. Yeah, and I saw that knockout. And Amanda Nunez was sick too. She knocked out Holly Holmes, which was crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Holly Holmes is the the one that knocked out Ronda Rousey back, back yeah. a few years back. Hey, eh? the original. She's the one. Yeah, she kind of messed up Ronda Rousey a little yeah, but bit. But Nunez is the new like she. Nah, she's like, the one right now. Yeah. Like I don't think, there's gonna be anyone stopping her for a while. That's crazy. She's dope. So we out here, we out here, and a lot of a lot of. Uh, I mean, a lot of clients been waiting on this, this first little podcast. I hope so. Um, you know. But I think so too. In the barbershop, I mean, the barbershop is a crazy place to network. I mean, so many different people pull up, come through for a cut, and I meet so many different great people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I'm sure at some point some of them could be on here too, and we could we could discuss some things that they're up to. Yeah, see um, what's good. But yeah, man. So we wrapping it yeah, up. I think so. Yeah, I think this is a good feeling. Yeah, wrapping you know? it up. This is pretty dope. I I don't know how long this was, but I don't know. I think it was at least two of these. I don't know even okay. if the camera's still recording. So I know yeah. the computer's probably recording still, but word. I don't know. All right, Maybe we'll, we should wrap it up. We're wrapping this up. There Hourglass Live, podcast number one. Boom. It's gonna be more to come. All right. Word. Subscribe. Yeah. Click the subscribe button. It'll yeah. be somewhere down here, all right? Yeah. Steph Cuddy. Easy. Steph Cuddy. Sean Thomas. Sean Thomas. Yeah. We out. Peace.